Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our next session. And this session, we'll be learning more about Brunel Medical School and about medicine. So we have Chris here from Brunel Medical School. And let me give you an overview of Brunel University and also about our speaker, Chris. Brunel University London is a highly regarded multidisciplinary research intensive technology university with a vibrant and dynamic population of staff and students from all over the world. Brunel Medical School is part of the College of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences, which is a leading provider of undergrad and postgraduate health professions education. The five-year medicine MBBS course will enable you to graduate with the educational, clinical and professional skills. You will need to be a doctor ready for further training in the UK or overseas. Medical scholarships are available for international students. Now, let me give you an overview of our speaker, Chris. Chris has been working with leading medical schools in and around London for many years. Now, working with Brunel University London, he enjoys being a part of its international environment and is looking forward to welcoming medical students for September 2022 intake. He feels the campus location is perfect, close to the city center, but far enough away to enjoy a very pleasant one-site campus experience. Welcome, Chris, to Next Genius webinars, and we're looking forward to learn, learning more about Brunel University. Brilliant. Thanks, Helen, for that um, warm introduction. Yeah, so from the Caribbean <clears throat> to London. Um, so yeah, we don't unfortunately have beaches in London, but we have a lot more um, going on, as you can imagine. Um, so yeah, over the next 20 minutes, we're going to cover um, a range of topics around the university um, and studying medicine. But I'm also going to speak more widely about, you know, becoming a doctor in the UK and what that actually means. Um, this is my email address. Um, so feel free to contact me at any point. I'm normally quite quick to respond. If you have anything admissions related, um, I will give you an email address at the end of this presentation um, and some other email addresses you can take note of. Um, but so I've got about, I think, 20 minutes to include questions, which is about fine. A lot to squeeze in, but we can do it. Um, so we're going to cover the following, uh, not necessarily in this order. It's a little bit about Brunel, um, why students enjoy studying medicine in the UK and London, give you the course information, we'll cover fees, scholarships, Stick around for the interview hints and tips, because again, I'm going to be talking more widely about having an interview for any um, university for medicine. Of course, we're, we'll um, talk about how to apply. Um, we we'll touch on entry requirements, but also what makes Brunel Medical stand out from all the other options you might be um, considering. I want to say at this point that the course is for international students only. So at the moment, we do not recruit our home UK students, although the, the, the plan in the future is to do just that. So to kick things off, um, I think there was about 40 or 50 of you here, which is great to see. Um, thank you for all attending. Um, now, to be a successful doctor, you, you will need some important qualities and also important qualities to become successful on the course. Um, and these are them, you need to be compassionate, committed, um, you need to be competent and smart, uh, respectful, honest, resilient and organised. So I just want to open it up to everyone now. Um, what do you think are the most important qualities here that you need to become a doctor? So you can either put it in the chat or the Q&A just say, you know, there might be three or four, there might just be one. What is the most important one there? Um, and then I'm going to give you the answer. Um, this is all relevant, especially for interviews as well. You know, if, you're, if you've got a medicine interview coming up, um, this may well, something similar might come up. So it's good to start thinking about it now. So don't be shy, put the answers in the chat. There's no wrong answer.
Um, Helen, I'm unable to see the Q&A and the chat answers. Um, could you? Uh, yes. Are there any answers so, coming in? Yes. So students have put up that uh, one student has put it up as calm and composed. And the next one, that is Anushka, has put it as a good doctor, needs to be patient. Yeah, good. I'll give you a couple more seconds and we'll, we'll give the answer. Participants, feel free to put up your opinion on the Q&A feature. Okay, well, so to be honest, it's a bit of a trick question. Um, they're all as important as each other. So if you have an interview question in something like this, you need to say all of them. You cannot be a successful doctor in the UK or in any country if you're missing one of these qualities. Um, I want to sort of pull out one of those and resilience to be resilient is, is really important because medicine is a very difficult course. It's very challenging. Um, you want to know 100% that you want to become a doctor. It should be your passion. It should be your interest. It should be your everything, really. Um, and you need to be resilient, you know, in a, in a trauma ward, in a busy hospital environment. There's lots of things going on. Um, so you need to be, you know, very well prepared for a very challenging and interesting and insightful career. So, you know, resilient is, is certain, certainly an important point. Okay. Thank you for that. So moving on. So why study medicine in the UK? Why come all this way to study medicine? Um, so first point is we have um, a really good quality, heritage and tradition related to the field of medicine. Um, you know, it's fair to say we have some of the oldest and best medical schools in the world. Uh, Imperial, uh, Oxford, Cambridge, to name but a few, UCL. Um, but we're regulated by the GMC. Um, which I think your previous presentation um, mentioned, which is the General Medical Council, which is the gold standard in quality assurance, which essentially means if you come to any medical school in the UK, um, it's been stamped by the General Medical Council and it's um, approved um, and is excellent quality. Now, um, there are many professional opportunities in the UK after you graduate. So after you've had your MBBS, you've done your foundation training. If you want to stay in the UK, which is very popular, I know for Indian students, there's over 100, maybe over 120 different specialities for you to consider. We also have a fantastic learning philosophy in the UK. It's not just the science you learn. Uh, we have a focus on teamwork, empathy and professionalism. But you may well have heard of the NHS, the National Health Service. It's one of the most um, famous and largest health systems, publicly funded health systems in the world. So to be a part of the NHS, it's a big brand, is something um, that students strive to be a, a part of. Now, so some of you will want to go straight back home to your home country, India perhaps. Um, after the five-year MBBS, but some of you will want to stay in the UK afterwards to do another two years training. So the great news is, and this is um, something new over the last couple of years that the visa system now allows you to do. So as a Brunel Medical School graduate, you can apply to do a UK foundation programme, which is essentially two more years training in the UK, um, in and around hospitals. Um, so this is not part of Brunel now, this you'll be a graduate and you'll be off on your own doing your training. Um, so you can stay in the country for another two years, you just need to transfer over to a different visa. So Helen um, gave a great introduction of Brunel, so just to uh, elaborate on that now. Um, so we're reasonably well established going back to 1966. I would say we're more known for internationally anyway, known for technology and engineering, but we do have um, a vast portfolio of health programs as well, biomedical sciences, life sciences, physiotherapy, for example. We have about 4,000 international students on campus um, with over 150 different nationalities represented on campus um, outside of the pandemic, uh, of course, on, on, on a normal day. Um, and we have a great reputation for looking after our international students. For that reason, we're ranked 27th in the world by International Outlook. For those of you who like sport, uh, we're very proud of our world-class sports facilities. Usain Bolt, along with the Jamaican team, chose our facilities to train in preparation for the London Olympics. 
Anyway, but more importantly is the campus. Um, very, very rare for London. The campus is all on one site um, with the student and student accommodation is guaranteed on campus. Now, you're probably familiar with the famous um, London tube map. So we are in a town called Uxbridge, um, which is very well connected to all areas of London, including central London, um, but also very close to Heathrow Airport, uh, which is of course, you know, handy for your arrival, handy for perhaps half term weekend travel, uh, for parent visits, etc. Um, you can be in a taxi, in a car, within 20 minutes, you can be on campus from the airport. So when you arrive, it, the campus looks like this, um, and the medical school is there, it's situated in the middle, on the right-hand side arrow, uh, it's, it's a building called Quad North, and this is, as we're a brand new medical school, this building is being refurbished on the second floor, um, exclusively for the medical school, and this will be ready uh, later this year and early, into, early next year. Just around the corner, in the bottom left-hand corner, is the main teaching hospital, which is Hillingdon Hospital. Um, this is our key partner hospital, and this is where you'll be doing a lot of your training, um, certainly over the five years. So jumping onto the course itself, um, as I said, we're a new medical school. Um, although the school that, that we sit in, um, well, the college that the school sits in is certainly not new, but the College of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences um, is very well established and as I uh, mentioned earlier has a wide range of other health courses. We are offering the MBBS which is the Bachelor of Medicine Bachelor of Surgery. Um, it's a PMQ, a primary medical qualification and this is essentially an MBBS recognized around the world, of course in India, uh, in America, Canada and all over Europe etc. Um, it's five years duration and we are offering a number of scholarships. Um, they're, they're worth £30,000 each um, and, but we're going to talk more about that when we cover the fees in about five minutes time. And by the way, um, I will cover all questions at the end. So if you put all the questions in the chat now, I'll be sure to answer all of them uh, once we've finished. So um, we have a very strong and growing academic faculty uh, made of academics from all over the world. Um, of interest, uh, Professor Lo Beer on the right, she is our Dean. Um, she's joined us um, from a Singaporean medical school. So she brings a depth of experience from Singapore, but also Imperial London. And she's actually um, a gynecologist by trade. So how to apply, the important part. Um, so application opens this September, um, if you want to apply for 2022. So just around the corner. And there, there's two on here, but I'm gonna mention three. So the first way is through UCAS which is the typical way of uh, applying to any course in the UK. You may be familiar with it. Application for medicine opens 7th of September, closes 15th of October, and that's it. That's your window to apply through UCAS. Now, if you miss that, um, or you want to apply to uh, us directly, you can do. So for medicine, you can also apply to Brunel directly. Um, application opens also early September, but on the 5th, And the third way I mentioned um, is to apply through one of our um, approved agents. And there's more information on our website. And our approved agents from India will um, help you through the application process um, and give you all the support you need for your application. Um, and interviews will be this December and also January and February. Now, we know the UK, it is very difficult to secure a medicine place for, as an international student, purely because there's not enough places to go around for everyone. It'd be great if there was, but unfortunately there's not. Um, so it's very competitive. Now the bar on the left is your typical medical school in the UK. So just so you're aware, the government uh, limits the amount of international seats we are allowed. Um, it's about 7% of a cohort is um, overseas. Now, the bar on the right is Brunel Medical School. So essentially, because we don't, at the moment, we're not um, accommodating home students, we have a lot more seats available for our international cohort. So the question you're probably asking is how many seats do we have? 
And we have around 70 places available for international students um, for 2022 entry, which is very high. Other universities are about 10, 15, 20. So it's great to have that many places available. So tuition fees, um, sorry, I don't know the conversion, but we're talking pounds, so 41,000 pounds, 200 uh, a year, quite normal for a decent medicine education in the UK. Uh, this doesn't cover student accommodation and living expenses, I have to say, um, but we do have a number of scholarships uh, and they were 30,000 pounds each over the duration of the programme. Um, so we're not just giving them away, uh, they will be awarded on merit, um, so first of all, you'll need to be um, have an offer to study, um, and then you'll be shortlisted based on your performance at the medicine interview. So if you perform well at your interview, not only will you get an offer, but you may also get an offer uh, of a scholarship, or at least through to the next round of the scholarship process. And the next round of the scholarship process is to have an inter another interview. Unfortunately, uh, there are online at the moment because of the pandemic. Um, and you'll be asked to give a short online presentation on a, on a subject that you'll be given with, you'll be given to um, well in advance of the presentation so you can prepare. But with scholarships, nothing to worry about yet because you first need to uh, receive an offer to study medicine. Now, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna dwell on this too much because all this information is on the website. Um, but essentially, we accept A-levels, IB, but also a wide range of international qualifications. Now, if you're an international school, you may well be doing IB, or you may be doing A-levels. So we ask for AAB minimum, A-level, and this must include chemistry, or biology, and a second science. And we actually include maths as a second science. Um, so you could come in with um, chemistry, uh, physics, um, Geography, for example. Um, IB, we ask for a minimum of 33 points, high level six, high level five in chemistry or biology again, and also the second science, which can be maths. Um, we have got a lot of information on our website um, that goes into a little bit more detail about the Indian qualifications we accept. But as an example, we accept the CBSE. I know some medical don't accept that, uh, we do, so that's, that's the good news for you, for you guys. Um, and we need 80% minimum from five sub subjects, including the sciences that we've mentioned. Um, and we also accept other state board uh, exams too. Now, if you are a graduate, i.e. Um, you've already done a, a bachelor degree already or uh, um, an undergraduate in a degree related to medicine, for example, biomedical sciences or pharmacology, neuroscience, um, you can apply, so that's great. If you have a, a 2.1 or equivalent, uh, we, we call it an upper second, upper, upper, upper second class, yeah. Um, now, we do not require students to sit the medicine entry test, uh, UCAT or BMAT, uh, for 2022-23 entry, so do bear that in mind. However, I shouldn't really be saying this, but I do encourage you to take either of these uh, exams because it does open up opportunities to apply for other medical schools in the UK. So if you are seriously considering studying medicine in the UK, I would take the UCAT or the BMAT anyway, even though we don't necessarily need it at um, Brunel. We normally ask for work experience. Of course, it's important uh, becoming a doctor. You may find out you don't even like it. However, because of the situation we're in uh, in the global pandemic, we certainly don't want you kicking around hospitals or GP practices. So we do not require it um, at the moment. However, that will change, of course, going forward. And we ask for IELTS 7 in all elements um, or equivalent. So we are, we, there are other tests you can do, uh, for example, like TOEFL. So interviews. We'll spend a bit of time now on interviews um, because it's something you can't escape. You can't ignore it. Um, you will have to do an interview at some stage of your um, your journey to become a doctor <laughs> at medical school. Um, so it's certainly a core to any application process. Um, so ours take the form of the MMI, the multi mini interview. Again, quite a familiar term now. If you're, you may have heard already if you've uh, done some research. If you don't know about the MMI, 
essentially it's an interview where you visit different stations to answer different questions under time and conditions. Um, so you have two minutes to read a scenario in a virtual um, Zoom breakout room, much like this. Um, and after the two minutes, you have five minutes to answer one of the questions. When you finish, you move into another virtual room, you speak to another academic and, you, and, and so forth until you've completed the whole cycle of about five to six stations. Now they're not easy. Um, there's, they are designed to be sort of challenging. Um, however, if you come well prepared, you know, you know the basics and you know the reasons why you want to become a doctor, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't be, uh, you know, you should be too, too worried. Now, these typically are um, delivered on campus at any university. However, they are virtual at the moment and they will be for next year also. So they're now called actually VMMIs, virtual multi mini interviews. So just a couple of tips from me now, because I've been um, working on with these for a number of years now, um, I would practice doing an online interview with a friend or family, um, maybe one of your teachers, um, record it, see how you cross, come across on camera, um, and then try again, get some feedback, because you want to be comfortable talking to a laptop doing an interview. It's, it's strange, you know, it's strange me now talking to a laptop with you there. Um, so please get into the, the, the habit of being able, comfortable talking to a screen, because you're going to be doing that at an interview. And also, you want to wear exactly what you'd wear to a normal interview if you are face to face, um, even down to your shoes. You want to feel and look the part. So I'm not sure whether we'll be sharing these slides at the end. So maybe take a screen grab or a, a photo of your phone, because these are some of the key areas that will probably come up at a medical school interview. Um, all core themes now. And medical schools will typically try and squeeze as many of these in in some shape or form. Um, so I recommend preparing for all of these. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of them because that's a presentation itself, uh, but you might wanna think about, as I said to you before, you know, you need to know exactly why you want to become a doctor. And the answer isn't because my family are all doctors, my dad's a doctor um, and they really enjoy it because that's, that for us, it's a red flag. We need to know about why you want to become a doctor. Think about patient care, your skills, your own motivations. Um, interpreting data quickly, that's a, you know, that's an interesting one, may, may, may well crop up. You know, if you can imagine you're a doctor on a busy uh, trauma ward, someone's giving you a graph to read and interpret the data and someone's life is at risk, you need to know, you need to process and interpret that data under pressure quickly. So practice doing that now and there's enough um, sample questions online for you to have a go at that. Um, and then I think finally here, a key point is be aware of and know what the NHS is, the National Health Service, as I mentioned before, because you're going to be working in it at least five years. So expect it to come up in an interview, perhaps. If not, uh, if it doesn't come up enough, if it doesn't come up in the interview, you could mention it to one of the academics and say, oh, the NHS, this is, you know, this is the challenges they've got. This is why it's so good. This is where they can improve, you know. Um, that certainly will score some points. And there we go, the NHS. Okay, so for the second half, um, I just want to go over, um, actually, Helen, how are we doing for time? Oh, you're on mute, Helen. Go ahead, Chris. You, yeah, five, 10 minutes. Sorry? How are we doing for time? Uh, you can go, you can take four to five minutes. Okay, fine. So I will just finish off and talk about um, a little bit about Brunel and what makes us um, quite unique and special uh, in, in the UK. So as I said, we're brand new. That means we have uh, brand new facilities. We have a simulated hospital ward. Um, we have anatomy center, a brand new anatomy center, clinical skills center, multimedia rooms, um, various social spaces. But importantly, importantly, we have a dedicated um, student support office for international medicine students. And more about that uh, in a minute. Now, we're one of the few medical schools in the world to use team-based learning. It's called TBL. You may have heard of it. 
um, it's an alternative to PBL, problem-based learning, which you'll see in most medical school prospectuses, no doubt, on the websites. So it's good to be familiar with these, again, for your own um, good, but also for interviews. Um, so TBL, the clues in the name, teams, you're gonna be working in teams a lot. Um, it's a very exciting and engaging way to learn with high levels of information retention. So throughout the course, especially in the early years, you're gonna be learning in a group of six students facilitated by our clinicians and academics. Um, so no lectures, uh, no falling asleep in the back of lectures. Um, it's quite an old fashioned way of uh, learning and teaching now. It's not very engaging as you probably um, have a good experience of. Um, so TBL is a very modern way of teaching and uh, now very popular uh, in the UK itself, America and Singapore. So exciting stuff. Um, unlike most other medical schools, uh, you'll be learning about the human body from real life human bodies, real life human specimens. So we call these plastinated specimens where you're gonna be learning anatomy. So essentially these are preserved um, real, real life human bodies. So I think the best way to explain it, if you've been to a body world exhibition in one of the major cities around the world, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you'll be excited to get your hands on one of these uh, specimens and start learning. So at Brunel, um, we are very well known for our outstanding student support service for international students. You know, we'll collect you from the airport on your first day and look after you all the way through to graduation. You'll have a dedicated personal tutor. You'll have all the, all the support you'll need uh, from your clinical placements uh, and on campus. Um, so that's something, you know, when you're looking at medical schools, you want to really do a bit of research from the student support office and the service that we provide or they provide. As a brand new medical school, we have the luxury of having state-of-the-art digital technology to support your learning. You're going to be learning about some really exciting um, techie stuff. Um, you're going to be learning about virtual reality, augmented reality, and much of your preparation and study will be done online using your own personal devices and our own digital platform. But the important point here is in the, let's say, unlikely event uh, of any other COVID-19 disruptions, we will be fully 100% digital and prepared to continue with our teaching online from the safety of your home. Now, I think uh, I just probably, there's two other slides, so please bear with me. Um, you'll be meeting patients um, right from the start of the MBBS. That's a great um, sort of gift we have for you. Um, and clinical placements are guaranteed, uh, of course, and they're located in hospitals in the surrounding area of Greater London uh, and the southeast of England and the, the neighboring boroughs of, uh, of Brunel University. What this means is being next door within London um, is you have access to a very wide and diverse patient population, uh, more so than any other areas in the UK. So you'll be on rotation, um, working in hospitals, community health centres and emergency medicine wards, as an example. More information is on our website if you're interested in these clinical placements. But here is a list of um, our approved placement providers. And you can see they're all scattered um, over London. Um, we've got Wembley there, uh, which is quite near to Brunel, if you can see my arrow here. Um, there's a good landmark for you in Heathrow Airport here in the blue. And you can see all the uh, hospitals are scattered over to sort of the, the west of London. Now, we can't forget about your electives. Uh, the, probably the part of the MBBS course that I know students look forward to the most. Um, here you have the opportunity to experience the medical practice within a completely different country and environment to wherever you've been uh, in the UK. You may choose to do this placement in the UK, in India, um, in a, a developing country, in a developed country, or wherever you want. So this is in the fifth year of the program, it's essentially an eight week clinical placement where you're gonna gain a lot from being uh, in a completely different environment. And you're gonna apply all your knowledge you've learned over the five years into the hospital that you're working in. So that's an exciting part of the course to look forward to. So we've been through it over a lot in a short space of time. So in summary, the program, the MBBS is a five-year program for overseas students only. We have had a lot of interest uh, from India and Asia in particular. 
We are opening for 2022-23 entry. Um, we have over 50, 70 places available. Application opens this September. Uh, you can apply directly to the university or with an agent if you wish. Uh, we have scholarships available of £30,000. You do not need to take UCAT um, for 2022-23 entry. Uh, student accommodation is guaranteed on campus for the first year. Clinical placements are guaranteed. Um, and team-based learning is our main method of teaching. And on a final note, I just need to add, um, as we're a brand new medical school, we are working very closely with the General Medical Council, the GMC, who will quality or short our course. And this takes the form of a year-by-year -year review. And we receive final accreditation once the first cohort, maybe one of you, um, graduates. And this is the same for any new medical school, so it's not just unique to us. Good. Um, I'm going to bring that to a close. Oh, I just want to add, um, here are the email addresses I mentioned before. So if you have anything admissions related, please do um, email medicine.admissions. Um, or if you uh, have something general, please email me, Mr. Holloway. Thank you so much. Chris, uh, as we are running short of time, Chris, it would be really great if you could stay online and answer the questions that have popped up in the Q&A feature. Also, well, thank you so much for the presentation and for talking about Brunel University. It was great having you with us. Uh, thank you very thanks, much. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Chris. Any final piece of advice to our students? Oh, um, no, I think my only piece of advice is um, prepare for your interviews um, but also look no, don't just look at the medical school look at the university itself um, because the university is you know essentially where you're going to be for five years so have a look at the medical school and the university you know they both go hand in hand and good luck thank you thank you uh, Chris for that great piece of advice also Chris please provide your mail id on the chat so that students can reach out to you for any doubts regarding the application process and the admission Okay, with that, we come to the end of the session. And now we have the last session of study medicine abroad fair. And we have Patricia Ma'am with us once again, joining from Junior College. Hi, ma'am. Sorry to keep you on waiting. Oh, no worries.